Welcome back to Jobland and News 12 Long Island. Avoiding bad hires is today's theme. Once again, joining me, Richard Selden, president of Sterling Testing Systems, Inc., Andrew Funk, president of Empire Research, and Mindy Kirsch, senior director of human resources of Altana Former U.S. in Melville. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the actual elements of pre-employment uh, testing. You know, you see a lot of things on the web nowadays, uh, and, and I think one of you made the point to me in the green room, and I, th I wrote it down. Was it phonydiplomas.com? Mm -hmm. Now, we don't want to give them any business. We, don't, you know, we, don't wanna, we want people going there and getting a phony. But man, are there, are there ways to, to get around the laws, uh, with, even with drug testing? Richard, let's show a list. Let's start with a list of, um, of, of the pre-employment testing elements. The first one is criminal history record searches. What, what do we do there? Well, companies are looking uh, for a few things here. Uh, one of the things they're looking for is to see if people have felonies, misdemeanors, or violations. OK. Uh, how about social security training? Races. That's the key one nowadays, right? Well, as Andy mentioned a little while ago, identity theft is the highest rising crime in our country, and it's a tool to help to identify those who might be falsifying their identity, as well as providing companies with address information. All right. How about consumer credit reports? Okay. Consumer credit reports are more or less used on a selective basis, and what I mean by that is position-specific. What you're looking for is obviously someone's credit history, their ability to make a commitment, live up to it, and mm. the best predictive indicator of future behavior is mm. past behavior. I'm still bad about one that didn't go it went against uh, some, one of my candidates. Uh, employment reference verification. Okay. Uh, this is a little bit of a tough one in this day and age. Um, organizations have what I refer to as reference reluctance. Mm -hmm. um, they're reluctant to provide information, but certainly, again, you want to see if someone has been authentic and genuine in the information and whether or not they do have the qualifications for the position that they've applied for. Okay. Uh, DMV checks. Obviously, driving records, um, especially if they're using a company vehicle, a sub company subsidized vehicle. Have they had their license suspended, revoked, speeding tickets, DWI, DUI? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, drug testing? Drug testing, certainly the statistics show that drug testing in the workplace reduces accidents, reduces absenteeism, reduces theft. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you read a lot about how to, how to beat it. How, to, how you can you you know come to our website and 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 you know you can we can beat this we can beat the DMV check, can they can people really uh, outsmart you two guys? Well, I think that in this day and age it becomes much more difficult than it has mm -hmm. ever before, mm -hmm. and some of this depends upon the type of drug testing. The type of drug testing that we promote is mm -hmm. government certified drug testing, right. and the laboratories that that do it um, do a real quality job with it. Mm -hmm. And and uh, Andy, have you ever had an experience where uh, you've done all these checks and and to the best of your ability you've done everything you can do and still uh, you know the, there was a phony diploma.com or something not that anyone's ever come back and told me about we've been told they admitted to a record and we said it was clear but it usually turns out it was in another county mm -hmm. we were searching in orange and it was in Rockland or something right I'm sure at some point given the hundreds of thousands of times you've checked that one or two may right. have happened. But as far as we know, no, that has not happened. Mindy, I want to tell you a story. We, uh, many, many years ago, I was, I was doing some work for a company uh, when I was doing staffing, and I had the, the candidate for the job, and he, he, they ran a credit check, and they found out that 10 years prior, and I'm speaking on behalf of all Long Islanders who have had bad credit somewhere in their lives, uh, innocently, uh, this guy had had some bad credit from 10 years prior. I think it might have even been more than that. Like 12 or 13 years, and they decided not to offer him the job. And I was crushed because it took two months to find this guy. Um, do you, how seriously do you take things like a, a consumer credit report? We actually don't run a consumer credit report at Altana unless the position is one that will be doing something with finance. Mm. So we, we do make sure that it, ha it has some relation to their job. Mm -hmm. um, if we do find information out, sometimes you can have an ethical decision on whether you want to make an offer to that person or not. Mm. And uh, uh, Rich, what about, what about the results of these tests and, 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 and translating them back to the employer? Do they always take your advice? Uh, you know, is there ever some, some gray area? Well, really, the hiring decision ends up being up, up to the corporation. Mm -hmm. And there are usually a number of factors that they'll consider. Not every tool that my company provides do I refer to as a bump-out criteria. Mm -hmm. If somebody tests positive for a drug test, mm -hmm. most of the time, to the best of my knowledge, our clients will not hire that individual. Mm -hmm. But to your point earlier, if somebody had bad credit 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and every other aspect of the person's candidate to see for the position mm -hmm. is superior. Mm -hmm. I would believe that most of our clients would hire that individual and not let that incident from 10 years ago be a bump out criteria. Mm -hmm. Andy, let me throw it to you. Um, give us an idea of what something like this costs. Uh, now, give me a, I know it's a, it's a variable thing because it, depending on which test you provide. Start with a low and a high, just so companies have an idea, even small businesses out there. 
Okay, a small business might just say, I want to be sure that this person is who they say they are. So they'll do a social security trace. You're talking anywhere between eight and $12, mm -hmm. just to check and see that the social, the date of birth, and the addresses match. Mm -hmm. If you want to add in a criminal check, do you just want to check in a county? Do you want to check statewide? We're talking New York, but there's a whole country out there. The person might have lived in L.A. for five well, years. Well, likely, if you've committed a crime, you've moved so that you, you know, it doesn't haunt you, right? I mean, that would make sense. Well, you, I, I really don't know whether you know, the criminals moved or not, but it depends on which state you're going to to decide what it takes to do it. Uh, New York has various rules on running criminal checks. Each state has a different rule. Uh, so it can go anywhere from 8 or $10 all the way up to you know, 100 125 if you want to do an extensive search. Mm -hmm. which I would probably just recommend for somebody in a very high position. Okay, we have to go to a, a break here. Um, we'll be back with some final thoughts from our guests while you're watching Jobline at News 12 Long Island.